Good morning. Um, today I want to talk about getting our priorities straight. Now, if you think about the word priority, it starts with the word prior. Prior means to come before. So, a priority is what we put first. It could be first in time, so you prioritize something by making it the very first thing that you do. Um, but there are different ways that things can take priority. They can also take priority in terms of their value and importance to us. Um, so how do we figure out um, what our priorities are? Well, I think there's a clue when we start to reflect on um, where our hearts and minds are at, how we invest our time, our energy and our money into things. And that gives us a clue as to what things um, we prioritise. Um, but. Um, priorities need to be sorted first because I think it's easy to go through life and not actually spend time thinking about and reflecting on our priorities and um, but priorities need to take priority over motivation and inspiration because you can find loads and loads of talks online that will motivate you and inspire you and get you moving but if you don't have your priorities right, you won't have direction. You don't know which way you're moving. Um, and in fact, it could be really hazardous. I reckon that trying to get your motivation and inspiration sorted before your priorities is a bit like getting into a car, putting a blindfold on, sitting in the driver's seat, turn the engine off and push the accelerator pedal. Motivation's all about movement. It gets us going. But if we don't know which direction we're going in and we don't know how to control where we're going because we've not got our priorities straight, it becomes really dangerous. So um, priorities need to take priority over motivation. So um, is there a, a way that we should prioritise things? Is there a kind of given model of priorities? Well, um, I think there is. I think there is a certain way that we need to prioritise things and there are ways that we should have our priorities. But then there's also how we think we have our priorities, the, way, the things that we think we put in order, things that we think are more important. And then there's the way that we actually prioritise. So how we should prioritise, how we think we prioritise and how we actually prioritise. Now, in an ideal world, all those things should line up. We should have our priorities straight. What we think we prioritise and what we actually prioritise should line up with what we really should prioritise. So what things should we prioritise? Well, um, I'm going to put it down to three just to make it really simple. God first, family second, everything else third. And I think that's a biblical model. I and mean, in fact, in 1 Timothy 3, um, Paul, the apostle, the church leader, um, makes it really clear um, that um, if you want to serve God, if you want to have a, a kind of ministry, your family needs to come before that. Now, I realise when I'm using the word family, it means so many things to so many people. Families come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, for me, my family's uh, a really kind of unique and interesting family. It's not traditional, it's not classical, um, but that's still my family that I've brought up in. Um, and now, um, you know, I'm, I'm married to a beautiful wife, I've got these gorgeous kids, um, and um, I've kind of started a new family unit. So when Paul is talking about family, he's talking about this household, the, the people who you are really closest to. So um, when I'm using the term family today, um, I'm using it to kind of, um, in this nuclear sense, that household, those people who you're closest to, whether that's your husband or wife, your kids, those people that you live with. Um, so, of course, um, our family um, will include much um, more distant relatives, like your second cousin twice removed, who um, you may not have even met. So, and we need to draw a boundary somewhere, but when um, the Bible is talking about um, us putting our family before our church and above our ministry. And um, what it's talking about there is it's talking about that kind of immediate core of people that you live with, that household, the nuclear family, if you like. Um, so, and that's what I'm going to be talking about as well. When I use the term family today, um, I'm talking about your, your closest household of people, whatever shape, whatever size, however unique and quirky that is. And um, that's what I'm talking about. So, um, the order I think biblically is this God family than everything else. The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. God is our first love, and he actually needs to come before anything and everything else in our lives. And this can actually be really challenging. If you're someone that just loves your family to bits, and you feel so blessed to have your family, you absolutely adore your family, 
it can be really hard to think, oh, I need to put God before my family. It doesn't, doesn't feel right. It doesn't seem right. Well, if you're struggling with that, um, I've struggled with that too. And I just want to encourage you with a few thoughts that'll help you kind of recenter and understand why it's so important to get our priorities straight in that way. Why does God come before family? Well, the first thing is that God loves you more than your family do. And he loves your family more than you do. God is love. He loves you more than your family love you, and he loves your family more than you do. So by putting God first, you're really putting um, yourself and your family into a kind of context and into the hands of a God who is love and loves so much. And the second thing to say here is that um, when we put God before anything in our lives, we give him permission to change us and to work in us and to transform us. Um, and we become the people that God made us to be. And I want to um, encourage you today, if you put God first, he will transform you in such a way that you're empowered to love your family more than you would be able to love them had you not put God first. And that's amazing. So. Um, rather than saying, oh, here's my family, God comes first, and so my family's been downgraded. In fact, what we're doing is saying, here's my family, I'm putting God first, and actually you end up loving your family more. It puts your family in a better position because you've given God permission and time to work in you, and the God of love is at work in your life, bringing more love into you, helping you to be a better person in the context of your family and that's amazing that's encouraging so you're not doing a disservice to your family to put them second but in some cases it may well be that that family that we're talking about are people who don't know god they don't have that relationship with jesus that um, you understand and know and enjoy so they're not going to relate to it um, or maybe they do but what i want to say is um, the fact that god comes first isn't something that we need to constantly say or reinforce or state it doesn't need to be something that we use to kind of compare and hurt other people and say right you're you're my family you come second and keep reminding them that's not a loving thing to do it just needs to be a reality just love him first just put him first in your heart and that's enough that's that's what's important that'll get things straight that'll get things right if god comes first he's got to be our first priority over our families and that'll help us to be better um husbands wives children that will help us to love our families better and they will honestly even if they don't know it they'll be grateful for it in the long run if you do put god first um but then i've said that um that, that family that core of people your closest nearest and dearest relationship need to come before and above everything else now that everything else includes a lot of things that challenge and draw and pull our time it includes our church it includes our friendships it includes our hobbies it'll um, include our work all of those things come into that that next level of priorities now working out which ones of those take priorities over other things can be really challenging and i want to say i don't think there's necessarily one right answer but i do want to challenge a few kind of misconceptions so um, one of them is that um, people will say, oh, well, my church has to be more important than my work. But get this, some people actually feel a spiritual sense of calling to their workplace. They actually feel like God has really called them to be in their workplace, whether that's um, a teacher or someone who works as a lawyer and uh, maybe someone who works in a, a business or an office and you feel called into that. That's your place of ministry. That's where you share the life and light and love of God with people around you. That's your calling. And actually, um, to that person, that's going to be kind of equivalent to their version of church. Some people um, have their, their service to God and their ministry in the church context. They do it through the church, whether that's projects, setting up sound, preaching, leading worship, whatever. Those are ministries within church. But some people have their ministries outside of church. So to say that um, your church needs to come before your work may not be the case for everyone. Some people have their calling to their work. And that doesn't mean that church drops out and they say, oh, I'm not going to go to church at all because my ministry is my work. No, it just means that's the place that they, they feel called to serve. And church is where they go and receive and they get fed and, and they fill their lives and, and don't get kind of overdrawn and and burned out by by doing everything for church on top of that because of course there's those people that god's given to us as our nearest and dearest families that we need to love too now i want to look at uh, a couple of ways in which we can get priorities wrong um one of them is um when we're talking about this kind of church ministry service thing um we can presume because we're doing it for god it should come above that family 
and that's a really common mistake it's, it's something we've got to really avoid doing we conflate our service our Christian ministry with God himself the priority is that God comes first but it's not that necessarily our service and our ministry and our church come first they're different things and we have to distinguish between them if we don't get this really wrong um, and this is what Paul's doing when Paul says that anyone who wants to have um, a church ministry and lead in the church needs to first love their family they need to put their family before that when Paul says that he's helping us distinguish that it's not that we love God less it's just that we have to love our families more than that service and that ministry um, so that's one way that it can go wrong another way it can go wrong is if um, we have wrong motives if we want to succeed we want things to get big we're, we're concerned about success maybe acknowledgement um, it might be a promotion at work or it might be a successful ministry success can lead us to um, prioritize the thing that we're trying to achieve in again over sadly over the family over those nearest and dearest relationships um, that are meant to be a priority to us um, and another one can we, we can use excuses like we can say oh well because I'm doing my work for my family I kind of need to put my work above my family now of course every job comes with its expectations and requirements you might have contractual hours to work there are certain things that you just can't avoid the fact you have to do them um, but the idea and, and the really important point here um, is uh, we can't kid ourselves that just because we're doing our work to support or provide for a family uh, that means that then we can begin to put it above our family in terms of our, our priorities and um, this important thing is as it goes God family and then everything else and trying to get it in that order is really um, the challenge that's what I really want to encourage us to do today and um, so and spend some time praying and reflecting. There's so many things that pull on our time, that pull on our energy, that uh, require our money. Um, so spend time thinking and reflecting and praying. What are your priorities and, and do they need to change? Do we need to shift our priorities around? Um, I'd love to pray with you guys. So thank you for joining me today. Um, let's pray. Um, if you do um, feel like this is something that you're challenged by, um, just join me in this prayer. So Father, um, I pray for anyone watching this today who um, is feeling challenged or um, has been reflecting on their priorities and feels like there might be areas of change um, help help them to arrange our priorities help us to understand and um, the right way in which we should be prioritizing things to put things in the right place and um, thank you that you love us first and foremost thank you that you love us so much that you gave your only son for us lord thank you that that is the model of like true prioritization you prioritize us and love us help us to um be um faithful in the way we respond to your love and the way we care for people around us father help us to um be um, good people for our families being good parents or being good children being good um, husbands or wives Lord help us to be the best version um, of ourselves that we can be for those people that you've entrusted to us Lord father I pray that you would um, help us to set our priorities straight help us to reflect honestly on what our priorities are um, and um, just continue to walk with us Lord we want to know you more we want more of your life in our life in Jesus name amen so thank you for joining me today, guys. Um, I'm putting these videos out every morning, so um, you can tune in on YouTube to, um, to get a, a video each day, with the exception of Sundays. Um, but yeah, um, if you want a notification, you want to know that's happening, click subscribe, press the bell button, and that'll bring up a notification to remind you the video's there. So thank you for joining me today. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Have a good day, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.